That's feels that's different. It's been a while. Thomas, how much uh, is tonight uh, almost a celebration of your era from that 2005 to 11 range when Ryan's getting his number, kind of representing all of you? Uh, I don't know if it represents me or our teammates. I think it's just awesome seeing guys, but... I think it's about Ryan exactly what he deserves, and that's going up in the rafters. So he was the backbone of this team, and um, yeah, it's going to be an awesome night. I haven't seen him yet, so looking forward to it. What made him so unique, Thomas, to play with? Well, he's skinny, he's tall, and he's just a fierce competitor. And I think what made him, and I realized this day one I met him in Rochester, is his preparation. And the way he practices. It didn't matter what drill it was, even drills where it was a 3-0 against him, and we could easily backdoor him. He would find a way to paddle it out like he did many times in real games. So just his drive each and every day to not make himself better, but also us at shooters. He hated when we came down and just kind of shot it to shoot the puck. He was like, no, shoot the score. So we did, or at least tried to do it. How important was the lockout season? Rochester for what you guys built and eventually mm-hmm. accomplished in Buffalo? Well, at the time, I had no idea. I mean, I knew the concept of a lockout, but I was like, okay, yeah, sign pro and go to Rochester and play with a bunch of these guys. And I think looking back quickly is I think from the first week of training camp in Rochester, I'm like, wow, this group is special. I mean, we had so many guys in the same age range all competitive wanting to come to work randy Cunnyworth and doug huda were awesome for the group keeping it light but yet making us work hard and yeah so it was fun um coming up with a ton of those guys at the same time what was it about what about ryan's intensity just when he got that stare that thousand mile stare in his eyes and just what did you guys make of that did did it frighten you in some way no, no, uh, d- no I, not of the above, to be honest. I think with him, he, you knew what he's, he was locked in every night, and that's what made him the ultimate pro and the goal he was his whole career. I mean, it was, it didn't matter if, you know, we had our down years or whatever you want to call it. His, his prep didn't, didn't change. And for me as a player going into every game, I knew we had a chance to win because we had Ryan Miller. Wanted you to bear down in practice. Yep. Did that help you become the scorer that you became because of that in practice? No, I don't think so. I always wanted to score, even though I passed too much in my career. But <laughs> I think what it did, what Ryan did help my game is to be more creative to score because I had to find different ways. Because he was really the first goalie I ever practiced against. Where I was like, hmm, this doesn't work. Where usually in the past it did work on, you know, the goalies and teams I've been on. So, yeah, so it made me more creative of my tipping, the way I was doing my slap shot, changing my angle. So he doesn't even know it. But, yeah, that's what helped me um, become a different type of shooter. Thomas, you got a lot of personalities. I mean, yourself, obviously, you know, Chris and Danny, Uh what they brought. But there was a lot of internal leadership with that group. Like, how much did Ryan and his intensity or whatever, I would leave it to you to describe, factor into all that? And where did he kind of rank in the leadership hierarchy, regardless of what anyone was wearing on their sweater? Well, Ryan was a, always a leader, but more of a quiet leader. I think and I think he understood that his job is to keep the puck out of the net. He did, I mean, there was times where he obviously did speak up and said something, and everyone would listen, but... You know, and he was similar to Chris, actually. Drew were both unbelievable people, unbelievable pros, competitors, not vocal, but they just, they just lead by how they work in practice, their demeanor in the game, what it means to win, what it means to lose. So I think I would put Ryan in that category. Does it surprise you how many guys from that group are now NHL or hockey executives? Drury, mm-hmm. Greer, um, Ryan is working with the NHL. Is, you know, d- does that surprise you, or what is what is the common thread for the success that they've had in, in moving up the ranks like that? I, 
well, I don't know what the um, what the common theme is. Maybe they got lucky. No, I think I think we had super high IQ on that team. I mean, remember I was a young kid and. Chris would talk to me just like I've played 10 years in the league. Same with Mike, same with Tepa Newman. And, and I love talking hockey. I love talking new face-off plays, ideas. And I think, again, it was just all about hockey talk. So I'm not surprised that all those guys are in the position they are. Does it still lead at you the way that season ends? You got four defensemen injured. You got Tim Conley injured. You have the team. Yeah. And does it still lead at you that all that – Happen. Yeah, it does. It's, I don't think that feeling will ever go away. You know, I, I mean, and afterwards I moved on and I had chances a little bit somewhere else, but it never and it didn't feel like the same even in other spots when I made the playoffs with other teams. I mean, that that's that was one you always look back. Even those two years in a row where I think that would have made my life or my career. Very special. When you look back at the 2010 season, mm -hmm. where the plays for the United States and the Olympics is incredible, that wins the resident of that season. Have you ever been around somebody who's had a year where he was just that explicitly dominant like that? Four years later with Carey Price when I got traded to Montreal, oh. he was. Again, I always, when people ask me, and I coach hockey now, my own kids and other kids, and they always ask me, who's the best goal you played with? I have to say Ryan Miller because that's my guy, but Kerry that year, Kerry Price, was, he's the same as Ryan that year. I mean, he won the Olympic gold with Canada. He led that Montreal team to the conference finals. So those two guys are the only two people I've ever seen in the zone and I haven't seen it since. Maybe Vasilevsky nowadays. What are your thoughts now about the Sabres and the team they put together with Don and some of these youngsters after some pretty lean years? Well, they're exciting to watch at least. I mean, to be quite frankly, I mean, I still enjoy watching the game a lot, mainly because I'm a hockey nut. And like I said, I coach, so I still like to get ideas from other teams, what they do, how they play. So I've always been keeping tabs for with the Sabres, but yeah, I think that this is a very young team, but an awesome team to watch because it's exciting. It's an exciting brand of hockey, and I think they're very close to being super competitive. When your kids get a little older, I think you told me once you might want to be an NHL executive or get into that. When they get a little older, you still look for yeah, I got that itch. I still want to win a cup. It's not going to be as a player. Body's not holding up, but um, yeah, I do have that itch and desire. Is Nolly taking good care of number 26 for you? Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, again, he's, I mean, he's always been a special talent, but I think this year what he's doing, it's it's quite amazing. I mean, his his steps, his compete, his battle level, the way he sees the ice was always amazing. I think now he's making quicker plays. Yeah, he's he's a fun player to watch. What age group do you coach? My oldest is a sophomore in high school, so I coach high school hockey, and then my twins are 12, so they're PVs. So I'm at the rink more now than when they paid me to be at the rink. Do <laughs> you yell more than Lindy Ruffin? A little bit less. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, my kids can turn the puck over a little bit more. And be great, so. All right, thanks, everybody. Thanks, thanks, Thomas. Okay, thank you, guys. Good, Good seeing you, man. Good seeing you.